Um, uh, a speaker today is um, uh, Yunhua Yu, who is on faculty at the Department of Philosophy of Tsinghua University. And um, his uh, works in the area of model logic mostly. And the topic of his talk is diagonal circular extensions of a sequent calculus. Please, you one. Okay, thank you for introducing. And uh, it's my uh, uh, it's my honor to have the chance uh, to attend this uh, conference, uh, the St. Petersburg Day of Logic Computability, and the conference honoring Professor Oravkov's 80th birthday. And also thank all the organizers for the uh, uh, for their handling uh, to uh, to put my talk uh, in the on, on the last day so that I can uh, so that it should will not conflict with my. Uh, teaching occupations in earlier days, and also to set my talk to be the first today so that it will not end in late night in my local time. So thank you all. And uh, the, the talk today uh, I'm going to uh, to present uh, is something that uh, uh, not brand uh, not brandly new. It's uh, something that I uh, did uh, uh, with, uh, two, uh, with, with, with two students. Uh, one is Zhu Yinqiu, uh, the other is uh, Chen Xinxian, one master student and one bachelor student uh, here in the department of Tsinghua University uh, during the year of uh, about 2017 or 2018. So uh, uh, I, have, I have never presented outside uh, in China, but I have, I have done it for about uh, three or four times in China. And uh, within the audience today, I, I saw, I see Professor Fitting Daniel Shinkanov and perhaps Thomas Studer, uh, who might have uh, have heard my uh, talk on this before. So uh, nothing new has happened since then. Sorry for 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 the specific uh, oh, persons. And so now let me start. Uh, so the outline of the talk will be like this. So first, I will uh, briefly. Uh, uh, introduce what is the diagonal extension and what the circular extension of the sequent calculus. Uh, there are not new definitions. We have uh, examples already existed and uh, I just uh, write it uh, in, in such a way so that we can compare. And then uh, I, will, uh, try, uh, I, I, will, I will try to introduce what we, uh, what we did uh, in uh, that year, uh, that is try to generalize uh, Shankanov's uh, read out about the equipotence between, uh, in our term, circular and the diagonal extensions of the calculus G3K4. Uh, and uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, our generalizations of, of Shankanov's read out. At the last, I will, I will uh, mention very few <laughs> applications and some open problems. So let's start with uh, secret calculus. Well, I, uh, I guess, uh, I will go quickly uh, through the very, uh, the very first pages. So by sequent, we mean an ordered pair of multi-sets of formulas. Uh, we, uh, we build everything on multi-sets instead of sets or sequence. Uh, so uh, to the left, we call an antecedent. To the right, we call succedent or sometimes negative to the left or positive to the right. So in a, a rule with n premise, we have a sectional form. Uh, it has n premises and exactly one conclusion. Uh, so uh, if n equals zero, then we call it initial sequent or an axiom. Uh, then here is something, uh, uh, well, I call it a proper. So the rule is proper if each premise has less than except the comma uh, we used to separate uh, formulas uh, than the conclusion. So if each premise has less than both, strictly less than both than the conclusion, then we call uh, the rule proper. So here is uh, Ruth in G3CP, uh, actually the bottom implication fragment. Well, it's classical, so it's, it's all fine. And uh, uh, we can easily see that uh, uh, all these four rules are proper in the sense uh, I just mentioned. Uh, so these are G3CP rules. And uh, we have some terminologies to be fixed down. Uh, formula occurrences, uh, in application of rules can have different roles. Uh, some called weak, some called side, some called principal or active. There are, um, uh, there are various terminologies, but uh, we, call, uh, we call formulas like uh, uh, there's two P's here. I'd assume that everyone can see, uh, can see the small mouse on the screen, right? 
where yes, I yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let me, yeah, start anyway. So uh, this two pieces are, are pretty simple. So at the bottom here, uh, the only principle positive implication here, the only principle negative implication here, these are, uh, these are principal occurrences. Uh, in the premise, uh, uh, corresponding to it are actual formulas, these two, and here, these two. And uh, all these pi's and sigmas are called side formulas. Gammas and deltas are weakening, uh, or uh, we just call it weak formulas. So that's rows of formula occurrences inside those rules. And uh, uh, this, uh, the, the same terminology also applies to modal rules. I have showed four modal rules here. Uh, they respectively are called L box, K box, K4 box, and GL box. So for instance, uh, in L box, we have a uh, principle occurs here and both two both these two are active. So in uh, K4 box, for instance, uh, this is principal, this is active. Uh, this is principal and they are corresponding active. Uh, all these two are weak. Uh, in GL box, we have uh, almost the same for K4 box occurrences, but still here is one special box eta, which is the negative occurrence of the positive principal. Uh, and it, but by our definition, it's also an active occurrence. So, oh, <laughs> I need to erase every time. Uh, yes. Now we have some uh, special names here. So in rules L box and uh, K4 box, you can see there is a box small theta or capital theta uh, in the antecedent of the premise. Uh, that is exactly a copy of the negative principle. And so negative active copies of negative principles, we call it cleaning. And uh, in, in the uh, root GL box, there is a uh, box eta uh, occurs to the, to the left side of the premise in the color of blue. That is the negative active copy of box of positive principle, uh, which we will call it diagonal occurrence. Uh, so with this terminology, we can say what uh, uh, what we mean by sort of diagonalized the rule. Uh, suppose that uh, we have the rule y, and uh, if we simply add uh, add a diagonal copy of all its positive principles, then the result will be the diagonalized version of that rule. We uh, we write d dot y for it. So for instance, uh, here, if we take k box, k4 box as our y, and so the only, uh, the only positive principle is this box eta here. If we keep this rule, but add the negative active copy of the positive principle, then it becomes the root gl box with diagonal occurrence here. So uh, we can write like this, GL box is the diagonalized version of K4 box. Now we came to uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the normal definition of proof and a derivation. Uh, since, we, uh, since we call axioms or initial sequence the zero premise rule, uh, we can simply say that the proof is a finite tree of sequent occurrence in which each node followed from all its children around the rule. And uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the G3GL proof of the uh, lob formula. Uh, in this proof, there are two applications of GL box rule and uh, uh, one here and uh, the other uh, here. And uh, as you can see, uh, the diagonal occurrence here uh, plays an essential role uh, since uh, yeah it it owes it, it has corresponding occurrences here and then uh, here and above here this uh, in, in in this application of GL box uh, we have uh, a diagonal occurrence here but uh, uh, it's so because in this application of GL box. The possible principles here, so it got copies. That's why. Uh, so it's uh, 
And by the, by the derivation, we mean not proof like tree, but uh, uh, hypotheses are, are, are uh, admitted. Uh, so uh, the finite tree of sequence occurrences in which each node that is not a hypothesis follow from all the shooting under root. Uh, if two calculi G1 and G2 prove exactly the same set of sequence, then G1 and G2 are said to be uh, equipotent. Well, some, some, some other uh, will say uh, simply equivalent. I, I, I prefer to choose another uh, term in order to, to, uh, to emphasize that uh, this is an equivalent with respect to probability of sequence rather than say uh, the, the size or length or whatever of the proof. So, uh, sorry for, yeah. And now for diagonal extension. Uh, we, we use notation GX to denote the calculus gained by adding the special rule X into the calculus G. And if, Gx and G are equipotent, uh, then we say that X is admissible in G. This is just your definition. Uh, and here is the definition of a diagonal extension. Uh, if we put the diagonalized version of X in G, instead of putting X itself in G, then the, uh, then the resulting calculus G D dot X is called the diagonal extension of the calculus GX on the rule X. So for instance, uh, in G3K, uh, G3K4, it's now a G3 cell calculus for the monologic K4. Uh, it can simply be gained by adding the rule K4 box we just mentioned uh, on the base of G3CP. And so uh, now read G3CP as our capital G and K4 box as the capital X. So uh, G3GL, which is the G3 style calculus for the Gerdau lob probability logic GL can be gained by adding the root GL box, which is the diagonalized version of a K4 box on the top of G3CP. So uh, in our terminology here, we can see that G, uh, sorry, we can say that G3GL is a diagonal extension of G3K4 on root K4 box. Now we move to the uh, uh, we move to the definition of a circular extension. Oh, oh, oh by the way, uh, I almost forgot to mention something. So uh, the uh, well, uh, I'm not sure whether uh, some people have used the name diagonal extension, uh, but uh, uh, the notion is for sure uh, not uh, uh, not new. Uh, actually, uh, in the year of 1984, uh, uh, there is now. Uh, a uh, paper by a uh, by Professor Arwan, uh, in which uh, he talked about uh, uh, sequent calculus of uh, omitting systems. Uh, so uh, there are uh, sort of uh, basic calculus with rule uh, in this form, and then uh, rules of this form is uh, considered. So it has the same uh, consequence. And it has a similar, uh, sorry, the same conclusion, a similar premise, but with now formula phi about a added to the antecedent. If we take if we take phi a to be just a box a, then uh, this rule is the diagonal extension of the of the first one. So. Uh, so the notion of diagonal uh, of, of, of diagonalized rule or the diagonal extension is for sure not new. The notion of circular extension is also not new. Uh, so for the calculus G, uh, we denote this circular extension by C dot G and uh, it employs it exactly G's rules, but not extended notion, no proof. So uh, in C dot G, the proof is still a finite tree of sequence occurrences in which each node either from all its children via the rule in G uh, or uh, here is now uh, exclusive or uh, shares the same sequence with another node on the branch it resides. So for instance, 
there is the proof. And uh, uh, there are leaves here. The, the leaf can either be in an initial sequent or uh, be in a sequent that has the, uh, sorry, or, or be an occurrence of, occurrence of the sequent that echoes, uh, that echoes some other node on the unique branch it determines with the same sequence. Uh, so in a C dot G proof, it actually has two uh, two two kinds of leaf. Uh, now C dot G proof can be seen as an ordered pair, uh, capital D and BL. Uh, well, this is uh, uh, more or less a, a Shankanov uh, notation, uh, where capital G is the uh, is the derivation, not the proof. It's the derivation in the underlying proof G and. Uh, uh, BL is called a backlink function that maps each hypothesis node to another node on the branch uh, it resides in, sharing the same sequence. Uh, so, uh, now after, uh, after presenting all these uh, uh, definitions, uh, now let's talk about uh, the, equi uh, the equipotence uh, or, or the potential equipotence of this, of these two extensions. Uh, so uh, it all starts with uh, uh, Shankanov's work, uh, which appeared in the uh, year of 2014. Uh, I'm not sure whether there is the Rus there is the Russian uh, version even earlier, but uh, what I what I uh, read is the 2014 version in English. And uh, uh, so uh, his result, uh, instead of showing that uh, showing constructively uh, the uh, interpolation property of uh, GL. Uh, also, in our, uh, in, our, in our terminology here in this talk, uh, that uh, uh, G3K4, if you do the circular extension of it, is equipotent with G3GL. So well, we can say that uh, the, the circular extension of G3K4 and the diagonal extension of G3K4 on root K4 box are equipotent. So this is uh, Shankanov's uh, result. And, uh, uh, our question is, uh, can this be uh, generalized somehow to, uh, to the statement of the following form, like uh, uh, if the underlying uh, calculus G enjoys such and such property and the keynote rule X enjoys such and such a property, then the circular extension of GX and the diagonal extension of GX on rule X are equipotent. And uh, uh, this is what we found. I call it an approximation because it has uh, uh, so many requirements and it seems to be artificial and it uh, does not have uh, very much interesting examples. But anyway, let's uh, go through those conditions. So the first to say is that uh, the keynote rule X respects the subformal property. Well, this is normal. And the second, uh, the rule X has exactly one positive principle occurrence, uh, we denote it by eta, and arbitrary weeks. Uh, here by arbitrary weeks, we mean that it uh, uh, can have uh, it can have uh, weak occurrences on both sides and has uh, no requirements on the form of the weak occurrences and have no requirement on the number of occurrences. And so for instance, uh, in the rule K4 box, uh, instead of all this principles and uh, uh, active occurrences. We also have a gamma here and I have a, have a delta here. They are both multi-sets with no requirement on uh, how many formers can occur in it and it has no requirement on uh, which form uh, the former can occur in it. So this is what uh, we mean by arbitrary weeks. Uh, there also the X should have all its negative principles uh, in drawing a cleaning copy on each premise. Well, uh, still we take a K4 box as an example, uh, although it has only one premise. Uh, so uh, the negative principle is the multi-set box capital theta. So it's, uh, uh, it's just uh, all the elements being boxed and put back into the multi-set. Uh, we see that in the only premise of this rule, there is also another copy of box capital theta, uh, which means that all is negative principles here in drawing a cleaning copy here. 
So the third requirement say that eta, which is uh, uh, which is a uh, uh, formula here. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, well, uh, there is some 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 bad notation here. I should have say phi instead of uh, eta since I just call the 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 principal occurrence here right, eta. Uh, so uh, eta should fit the rule x. I will I will erase and write it again. So in the rule x, uh, eta should fit the requirement of x as the negative side on each premise or a negative principle. Well, uh, this is uh, 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 this is uh, um, this is not we need for K four box, but what we need if we want to generalize uh, uh, the result to uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the border range. Uh, so remember that uh, remember that uh, no matter what uh, uh, the negative principle is, uh, we should have the cleaning copy here, and therefore uh, instead of uh, instead of actives. Uh, that relates to uh, the negative principle. Uh, it has a cleaning copy here, and it's sort of a side effect, uh, or, or start with A, a side effect. Uh, so it is the negative principle, but uh, the cleaning copy gives it, uh, behaves sort of like the side formula here. Uh, and so this requirement, uh, This requirement, it's like, well, I just explained. So uh, the first three requirements all applies to X. And then uh, this two requirement applies to the underlying uh, calculus G. We require that each rule uh, in G is proper and respects some formal property. And this is not hard to achieve. For instance, G3CP, uh, G3CP uh, satisfies, but uh, G3IP, the G3 style calculus for intuition in statistical logic does not satisfy the, uh, the formal, uh, since in, uh, in G3 IP, uh, the IL implication rule, uh, we have, uh, 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 we have uh, the left premise goes like this. So uh, the alpha can be longer than delta and therefore uh, it breaks uh, the proper requirement. Uh, so this is the, the, the first requirement on, on the calculus G. The second one, which relates to the uh, shape, uh, to, to the form of the positive principle of the rule X, says that uh, eta, the, uh, po only, the, 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 the only positive principle of the rule X should fit in each axiom in G as the negative weak and fits each, uh, 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 each non-axiom rule in G as a negative side. So uh, if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, all these G3CP rules, you will see, for instance, in the rule R implication there, uh, mm, it, has, uh, it has pi in the antecedent and the sigma to the succedent still, there are no requirements on the number of formers in and the form of the former scene. And therefore, uh, the eta automatically fits as the negative side. So the last requirement uh, is uh, actually pretty strong. It requires that uh, both GX and the diagonal extension should, uh, should have all these rules that being admissible, including all these uh, structural rules, weakening, contraction, uh, the rule cut, and the rule ID, uh, which means uh, uh, simply uh, having the same formula to the left and to the right and uh, well, with, uh, with other formulas at the side. This is not excellent because in G3-style calculus, uh, in the rule AX, uh, the negative and the positive principles must be an atomic formula. Well, uh, if, uh, if the, uh, the, the calculus G and the rule X satisfies all these six requirements, uh, then we know that the circular extension and the diagonal extension are equipotent. Uh, so, uh, let's briefly uh, let's briefly uh, sketch uh, how to how to uh, 
carry out uh, carry on the proof. So the the direction from diagonal to circular, uh, we can uh, simply uh, we can simply apply the strategy uh, by Shankanov uh, in, in in his paper in 2014. Uh, and uh, well, I also I also uh, added here another reference uh, that's uh, Castillo, uh, one Castillo, sorry, uh, in the year of 2015. So the difference is uh, Shankanov write his uh, uh, his uh, um, uh, proof on the base of uh, Tate style sequence. So, so so it's one side it's one side sequence calculus, and uh, one Castillo or uh, did it in two sided. So it's more uh, uh, it's more closer to, 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 to our setting here. So assume that S has a, a form uh, like this, where uh, by uh, theta we mean uh, negative principal. Uh, by eta we mean the positive principal. There are, there are only one of them. And this uh, negative size uh, and the, the sigma the positive size and it has the negative weeks and the positive weeks. So uh, it, uh, this rule X may have, uh, uh, may have many premises and uh, each is indexed by an, by an index uh, small i in the range of capital I. So, uh, uh, so uh, as we have required, uh, all this negative principle should have the diagonal copy, uh, should, yes, oh, sorry, should, should have the cleaning copy here. And, uh, uh, and all this uh, negative and positive side formulas should simply have the copy here, and all the other, and all the other of uh, phi's and uh, uh, psi's are negative and positive actives respectively, uh, which correspond to uh, both the theta and the eta. So this is the form of the rule, and if x has this form, then dx should have the form like this. So uh, everything stays the same with only except that uh, we have the diagonal occurrence, which is the active negative occurrence of the positive principle in each premise. Observe that, observe that uh, for, for each index j, in capital I, which means for each premise, the following rule is admissible in the diagonal extension. So what is this rule? Uh, the rule has, the rule has a, a conclusion uh, just as the J premise of the rule X. That is, uh, Hmm. Oh wait. Uh, sorry. I should. I. I, I should point it here. Right. So the conclusion is just the J's premise of the uh, of the rule X, and uh, the conclusion is just uh, the group of all the conclusions of the diagonal uh, extension, and so it's sort of like the the group admissibility. It's like so uh, in. In the in the diagonal extension, if you have all the premises ready, then you simultaneously have all the premises of rule X ready. So that is the uh, admissibility uh, it's about to say here. So this can be shown by uh, admissibility of weak contraction cuts uh, in the diagonal extension uh, uh, due to due to uh, due to limitation of time. I I will not go. Uh, I will not go through the proof here. It's all or it's all there in Shakhanov's work already in some other terminology or notations. So, uh, yeah, uh, with admissibility of this strange rule, we can go bottom up. We can go bottom up and uh, uh, replace the diagonal uh, replace dx applications by x ap applications to get the growing in height uh, gx fragment from the root. That is uh, the fragment in, in gx instead of the diagonal extension. Uh, let me uh, simply uh, show all the lines and then turn on the, turn, turn on the pencil <laughs> that will save me from uh, opening and closing all the, all the, all, all the text. 
Uh, so uh, suppose that this is the proof in the diagonal extension and uh, uh, from bottom up, we replace application of dx simply by, uh, x, uh, by x applications. We can do so because uh, whenever dx is applicable, we know that all the premises are provable. And since all the premises are ready by the admissibility we just mentioned, uh, we have uh, all the premises for the undiagonalized version, just the x ready. And therefore we can simply use the rule x here. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, the price we pay is that uh, uh, using that admissibility, we have, we have no, no controls of what's happening above uh, this sequence. And so all these subtrees uh, can get larger or longer or get more complicated. But, we, uh, but still, we do it uh, from bottom up. And uh, uh, since GX, well, uh, by doing this, by the way, uh, we have a GX fragment of the, uh, we, we have a GX, GX X, uh, fragment uh, growing in height from the root up. And since GX in drawing is a conformal property, on each branch, only finite many formulas may occur. And if the, if the branch, uh, tends to growing uh, to keep going forever in this construction. Since G is proper, uh, the branch must pass through applications of X infinitely often in order to use a cleaning copy to make duplications uh, so that the sequence can still get longer. And uh, uh, we uh, and thanks to the arbitrary weeks of the of the rule X, or we can simply we can simply treat redundant copies of this as weeks at the nearest or the next application of the same rule X. So after doing that, we can get in cycle. That is the, uh, uh, that is the, uh, the sequence that occurs, that occurs, uh, sorry, the same sequence occurs twice in a, in a branch uh, that tends to go in infinitely long. So we can chop off higher nodes with the same sequence again, and initial that branch uh, with backlinks to get the, to get the uh, proof in the circular extension. So that is uh, what Shankanov did uh, for the direction from diagonal to circular. And we are about to uh, inherit uh, uh, his method. For the other direction from circular to diagonal, uh, well, well, we need some, uh, we need uh, some uh, proof construction different from Shankanov's. Uh, Shankanov uh, did his work uh, mainly targeting at uh, K4 and GL. So he used some, uh, some, some properties of the logic K4 and uh, GL, uh, which may not hold uh, if we want to push it into the general sense. Uh, so uh, we go like this, uh, given a circular proof uh, in the circular calculus, uh, we uh, we had to first define some 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 notions here. So for each backlink, uh, well, again, let me show all the lines and then open the pen uh, in order to to save my clicks. Oh uh, no. So uh, suppose that in a tree, there is a backlink link the leaf to somewhere here. Then we call uh, the leaf and the source and we call uh, uh, the sequence that the arrow points to a target. And so the BL is the actual function and notes in the domain are all leaves, note in the range cannot be leaves. Uh, it is possible that BL is uh, not injective. So you may have uh, different, different sources point to the same target. This is, this is possible. Uh, since G is proper, uh, each cycle, by cycle we mean uh, all, the, all the string of sequence uh, from, uh, from uh, the target of X uh, to X. Uh, the cycle must pass through an application of X. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, when you go up, the sequence always gets shorter and shorter and there's, there's no way to see, to see the same sequence again. Now, uh, for two targets, 
for two targets, uh, we write uh, x uh, smaller than y if x, y are distinct and y is in the subtree rooted x. So suppose that uh, uh, this is a uh, subtree in the uh, large proof D and the root is the target X. Um, uh, if another target Y located in the subtree, then we write X is less than Y. And uh, so for the next line, uh, if X is not uh, equal to Y and the sub proof rooted at the target X contains the source of Y, uh, then we write X triangle Y. So for instance, if here is uh, instead of the target, but the source of Y, and uh, uh, located inside of subtree X, then we write X triangle Y. Uh, the less than relation is for sure transitive, but the triangle Y, uh, the triangle may not be transitive. Uh, this is so because, so for instance, hmm, if here is the Y, uh, this is target Y, this is the source. And so we should write uh, uh, X triangle Y since X contains the source of Y, uh, but then Y may contain the source of Z and uh, perhaps also the target of Z here on another branch. So Y triangle Z, but X triangle Z does not hold since uh, Z, Z, target Z does not have the source in the subtree here. But, well, but we still have some, um, some, some trivial facts here. For instance, uh, if X is smaller than Y, then uh, X triangle Y, well, this is for sure. And the second, if X, is tri if X triangle Y, then X contain the source of Y, and uh, sorry, the source of Y, and the target must lies on the path, uh, the, sorry, the branch that it uniquely determined. Uh, so why, uh, so the target of Y must uh, occur in, in, in this branch. And uh, since it cannot uh, equal to X, so either it's above X or it's below X, but I, uh, we should have one of these two. It is clear that if you, uh, if you highlight all these uh, targets uh, with the relation less than, then it forms a tree. But if we do the same uh, with the relation triangle, then it may not be in a tree and it may have cycles. So for instance, it is possible that, uh, uh, let me write one and two. Uh, so uh, one contains, subtree one contains the source of two pointing here and uh, Uh, so one contains the source of two and, and the subtree two contains the source of one. So it may have cycles. Yet it is possible and you know, hard to show that uh, uh, if this graph have the cycle, uh, then it must have a cycle of lines two. So uh, the final line of this slide, uh, if the container, uh, sorry, if the subtree does not leak sort of then we call uh, the root the container. Uh, so it's like uh, if X is so such that uh, everything, every source it contains in the subtree does not go out of the range, then we call X, uh, then we call X the container. And uh, well, clearly the lowest target is always the container. Uh, it's always the container since there's nowhere to leak. Now, uh, after seeing this definitions, we are going to uh, to introduce our general strategy. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. Okay, it's here. Uh, so the general strategy is that uh, if we have no, uh, so let us start with the uh, with the simple case. Uh, if we have no, uh, no, I should not draw it here. I should leave some space. So let me start here. If here is now, uh, is uh, 
the subtree. And uh, here is the target. It may have multiple sources above pointing to the same target. And uh, uh, as we have uh, mentioned, in each cycle, there must be an application of the rule X because otherwise uh, uh, going up, we will not see the same sequence again. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the application of X may occur here or above the branching, both are possible. And there could be uh, multiple applications. So uh, without loss of generality, let's assume that uh, uh, it goes like this. It has uh, multiple applications, but only after the branching. And now what we do is that uh, in the, in the uh, whole proof, we sort of cut uh, this sub proof rooted at one and the tag it, tag it up here and here. We can do so because this is the backlink, which means uh, originally here is the sequent and here is the same sequent again. So uh, we can safely tag it up without breaking any, any rules, uh, rule applications nearby. So after tagging it up, this is no longer our target. This is no longer a source, but, our part, uh, but a target with sources here. So we got uh, copies like this. We got copies like this. And uh, yeah, so this is no longer a target, but we have two targets here and uh, uh, each have two sources here. Now what we can, uh, now we can do the following. We turn all the X applications in the tree into a diagonal extension by simply adding diagonal occurrences. Uh, so let me see. Uh, I will change to uh, another color. I hope it's blue. So for instance, uh, here is the application of X, the rule X, and it has the, the positive principal. Now we, want, uh, now we change it to an application of DX and therefore we should copy the positive principal as the uh, negative active, the diagonal extension here. And remember that uh, 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 the, the all rules in G and the rule X uh, admits, uh, admits the positive principle as the negative side or the negative principle that have cleaning copies. This means, well, this means we can, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can copy the, the, the mm, we can copy the diagonal occurrence all the way up. At every at every sequence to the left side, so it all climbs up until when until we reach a copy of the original rule here. So it's not it's not it's an application or it's a copy of this application, and therefore at the conclusion we have the same positive principle here. And when the diagonal copy climbs up is located in the left side. And therefore, at the bottom of this application, we see the instance of the admissible ID rule. And we can simply chop off all this part and initial that, uh, and initial that uh, node with admissible ID. So this all goes with uh, uh, one branch. And also, we can do the same here. But these two are, are sort of different because uh, these two applications, if we call the small a and b, are copies of a and b here rather than the application we just talked about. And therefore, uh, here we need to, uh, uh, to, to do the same again. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need to copy this tree with this part having chopped off up here. So this has been chopped off and it has the source number one here. Now here is the target. This is no longer the target. And uh, uh, this branch is still here, I have two applications. Now uh, we can repeat the same strategy uh, to, add, to add the negative occurrences here until we reach the ID here. Uh, so we do the right, right again, we chop this one off. 
we do the uh, left and left again, we chop this off. And in this way, we can simply erase all these backlinks. But this is the, uh, this is the uh, uh, easier case. For the more general case, the more general case is that uh, uh, this relation, uh, the more general case is that uh, this relation does not hold, which means we do have uh, we do have cycles in the in the in, in the in the triangle graph, and uh, uh, if there's no cycles, we can simply proceed from top down from leaf to to root. If it has the cycle, then we need to go uh, we need to go the opposite uh, direction from bottom up. Uh, we do this until sources all sources of all copies of the lowest container are chopped off. Uh, remember, there is always the lowest container, right? Uh, I think due to time restrictions, I have no time to go, th go through the, the, the detail of the construction here. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but still, uh, the key idea is that we do it from bottom up uh, so that all copies made are Subtrees rooted at containers, so that no backlinks will be strange. Uh, that is to say, uh, if we have things like this, two point here, one point here. If we uh, if we do the the technique for two instead of for one, then we will have only this part being being copied, and we will have one source of one here and one source of two here, and now. This sources of one have nowhere to go, but must go to the original target, which is no longer backlink compared to the original proof. This is what we don't want. We don't want anything to be strange. Uh, so we uh, so we switch the order. We do it bottom up so that no backlinks will be strange. And uh, well, um, by applying the same technique uh, with some care, uh, we can do so to reduce uh, the the number of cycle types inherited from the original, original graph, and therefore eventually leads to the subtree with the desired property to conclude, uh, sorry, to finish, to finish the construction. So this is the general idea of uh, the direction from a circular to a diagonal. And uh, I have no time to go through details, but with care, uh, you can see how those, uh, uh, how, how, how the six requirements are used in this construction. Now let's uh, go to the final part to conclude the talk, application and open problem. So, uh, so far there's only one meaningful application <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so Shekhanov's readout uh, is uh, sort of between the logic K4 and GL, and we can do the same between there, uh, there are, uh, uh, go to model embedding pre images that has features BPL and FPL. Uh, so, uh, so, so this is uh, uh, what uh, uh, Zhu Yinqiu did for his master thesis. Here is the typo, not 2007, but 2008. Uh, so, uh, this is the calculus for G3BP, the calculus for features BPL. If we do the circular extension, it's a circular extension of G3BP. And if we do the diagonal extension, it's the calculator for, uh, for FPL. And these two are, equi are equipotent. Uh, well, the rule is as follows, uh, uh, originally from, uh, from the work of three Japanese logicians. And finally, there are uh, open problems. Uh, I guess the main one is uh, whether, mm, whether it's, it's meaningful or the, the, the six requirements have already narrowed down the field so that we only got K4, GL, and, uh, and, and logic like it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so for instance, how to deal with diagonal occurrences other than merely the, the, the Poisson principle, uh, uh, like the general version that I've mentioned from a Professor Aron's paper or, uh, or especially uh, the one for GRZ or the weak GRZ. And uh, uh, also in uh, Savatyev and Shekhanov's later work, uh, they found uh, uh, they found the equipotence between uh, some non-well-founded uh, uh, calculus and the uh, calculus uh, for GRZ or weak GRZ or so on. And it's, it's still not clear uh, how to sort of generalize uh, 
uh, how to generalize this proof to that range. So that is the end of my talk. And here go some references. Uh, uh, again, here should be 2008, not uh, sorry, 2018, not 2017. So uh, that's all. And uh, thank you for listening. And all questions and comments are welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. Uh, I'd like to clarify something. In your yes. th theorem, uh, what do you assume about the syntax of formulas? Are they uh, propositional formulas with a model operator or is it more general than that? Oh, well, um, I think there is, uh, uh, there, is uh, uh, there is no special requirement of that. Uh, yet, if you take quantifiers into account, uh, then, for instance, uh, you will have substitutions and the terms will come in. There will be harder and uh, uh, there will be a lesser chance to uh, sort of uh, meet the same sequence. Uh, but still, I think in the proof, we do, not, uh, we do not assume that the language is propositional. We do not assume it. Uh, uh, so what are your assumptions? Obviously, since you're talking about the subformula property, uh, yes. this ah. is not very abstract. It's not just you know, arbitrary strings of characters, but it, it's uh, probably more yeah. general than just the, the, what, what's used in your example. So that's yeah, what I'd yeah. like to yes. uh, My question is about the precise statement, the theorem, what syntax of formulas uh, you, you assume? Yes, uh, so uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, if we have uh, uh, quantifiers and have terms, then we should be careful about the notion of subformula. So for instance, uh, let me open the pencil again. So usually we will say, uh, you, uh, in your textbooks, we will say, for instance, uh, uh, AT is the subformula of for all X, AX, but, but if we want to carry what is going on here, we have to we have to ban this. Uh, if we simply have uh, a as the uh, the the unit predicate the unit predicate example, then a x is the subformula of for all x a x, but say a y is not. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah, just a, a, a fast one. Uh, what happens if you uh, have uh, multiple modal operators? Oh, well, so, uh, uh, so, so far, well, we only, uh, we only uh, talk, uh, we only consider a diagonal, a diagonal extension on one, on one rule. Uh, so if we uh, look back here, ah, uh, yeah, we have diagonal extensions only on one specific rule. If you have multiple model operators, then uh, it depends on the calculus. If you mm -hmm. have, uh, say, uh, well, uh, that operator should be positively print, uh, should be pos should be positively principally introduced by at least one rule and assume, right? Uh, and so it is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, natural to imagine that in that uh, calculus there will be different rules and you can consider diagonal extensions of this or of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you put two things together what we have and I have no idea. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Yes, uh, I, I have a question. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Uh, uh, First, I wonder when you can op obtain Linden interpolation for uh, the logic of Pisa uh, using this uh, cyclic system, uh, which you mentioned. Uh, uh, and... Excuse me, I I don't follow you. I uh, there are some. Uh, uh, first, I wonder whether we can uh, obtain Linden interpolation, uh, maybe in a similar way of, uh, uh, as uh, I obtained for the case of GL for the logic of Visser. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so uh, uh, for uh, for Visser's logic, uh, uh, FPL has interpolation, and it has been shown uh, in the year of two thousand three 
uh, by the Japanese logician, which is one of the three co-authors for the 2001 paper, I forgot which one. And the way they do is uh, uh, instead of uh, the instead of the strange implication which behaves uh, not so well in FPL, they also introduce uh, auxiliary uh, implication called implication plus, and then they uh, then they do, uh, then they find a calculus with both implication and implication plus. It's, uh, it turns out that in that calculus, uh, interpolation can be, can, be, can be done in a routine way. And then they erase the uh, implication plus, uh, retracted to the origin language. That's their, their, their method. Right. So, and do so, they so consider, of F, uh, sorry, what? Do they consider Craig or Linden uh, interpolation property? Mm, so, uh, frankly speaking, I forgot. I forgot. But uh, let me uh, let me go to the reference. Uh, uh, let me go to reference. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Aishi and two other co-authors, uh, both from Japan, authored two thousand one, and one of them uh, authored two thousand three paper. I can check it out and and, and send it to you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, and maybe one uh, one more remark sure. concerning your slide on Wigjigochik logic. Uh, uh, WGRD, you mean, right? Uh, yes, this one. As I remember, oh. in our work with Yuri Savatiev, uh, there was a cyclic, we, uh, uh, we obtained a cyclic proof system so for the weak geographic logic. However, our model rule uh, is not the, uh, this rule is not a diagonal variant of our model rule. So uh, uh, there yes. may be some additional interesting details. Yeah, I remember that you are, uh, I remember that you are rule is the branching rule and uh, only 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 one branch, maybe the right branch is sort of interesting in 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 terms of making uh, non well founded branches, right? Yes, this is for case of Zhigorchik log uh, logic and for case of the weak Zhigorchik logic, there are several maybe unlimited number yeah, of yeah, yes, uh, yes. premises. But uh, I just want to notice that this rule is not a, the diagonal variant of that one. Of our right, right, yeah, yeah, they are not, they are not. Thank you, Jan Ha, for your talk. Yeah. Yeah. I still have a question. Sure. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, and uh, that's a question to the speaker, to Daniel, to Mel, and also to Matthias, <coughs> and to all the people present. So let's assume this this full post Hilbertian notion of a proof. I'm just it's a follow up by by beautiful Matthias talk, and uh, the following one: a proof is a failed attempt to build a country example, or to build a country model rather. Hmm. This is very close to the main idea of a tableau. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Now. Question to uh, question: Is there something which uh, resembling or something similar to circular, circular proofs in tableaus? Because I remember the story when the people invented nested sequence. It turned out to be that uh, 15 years earlier there existed as a special type of prefix tableaus. And I'm just wondering: uh, Is there? <clears throat> the, this connection, which uh, from this general perspective looks quite obvious, or at least quite plausible to dig in. So, Mel, Sam, uh, well, the Sam is. Yeah, the servant. Okay, that's the question. Uh, so, it's, uh, well, uh, I, I remember that uh, uh, during the year of 2018 uh, when. Uh, uh, Professor Fitting and uh, Daniel Shakanov visited uh, visit me. Well, we have discussed uh, uh, that. So, um, uh, well, in some in, in some bit. So we have K4 and uh, in GL. If you do K4 tableau and uh, fell into the fell into the loop, 
uh, then we will say that uh, this is now failure of uh, now proof construction because this branch is never closed. But uh, in the in the semantics of a GL, since GL does not uh, uh, well, GL requires reverse uh, well foundedness, so that there should not be any chain that goes infinitely long. And therefore, uh, once the loop is formed, uh, it should be considered as the closure of the branch. So 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 that is the analogy uh, you just mentioned. But since tableaus are quite universal tools, I expect this to be quite as universal as tableaus in general. So uh -huh. what would be the, the global impact of these new ideas and this post Hilbertian notion of a proof? And this, this, is the, this is the appeal. So I'm not expecting to answer immediately, but I really want uh, all of us to think in this direction. Okay. If I could ask, may a comment? Um, there is circular proofs have been considered recently in resolution by a paper about Sirius and then Lauria in 2018, where they keep track of the number of times a formula has been, been derived. And it turns out it's very closely connected to counting. And so there's a very nice theory of circular proofs in, res in resolution uh, with connections to algebraic proofs as well. But the, the real connection is to counting. I'm, I'm just wanted to throw that out. I don't know if there's any technical or other, I guess, connection to the type of work you're doing with modal logics, but it's a very interesting convergence or confluence yeah. of methods. And to what extent this extension, uh, to what extent this new notion can be uh, absorbed by the old, the traditional Kilbertian notion of proof, maybe in a larger system? I see, I see the answer to your question more, most clearly in the terms of temporal logics. Because if you think of the completeness of this temporal logics, you see uh, that it is a loop which is cut it by an induction rule. So in a certain sense, you could simply not cut it by the induction rule and simply say the loop. Keep it running. Oh. It's a loop. And it's a okay. yeah. Very good. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we have all contributed to this. It's, it, it's, a, it's a very important uh, outcome of the whole conference, I think, that's this kind of discussion. Uh, so I would like to add maybe and comment sure. on this question. Sure. Uh, surely, uh, as jail uh, can be con can be considered as a fragment of the model new calculus, we can, uh, on the one hand, interpret uh, cyclic proofs as a kind of reflection. Uh, clarification, reflection, and proof theoretic uh, on proof theoretic level of induction, and uh, similar effects uh, we met when consider other fixed point logics, like. Uh, however, uh, I think that it's also interesting to. Uh, try to find other interpretations of this uh, circle phenomena and uh, maybe one possible direction is to consider the exhaustive interpretations. Uh, we know that K4 uh, is a subsystem of GL. K4 can be considered as a uh, logic, dox, doxastic logic, and uh, I guess that GL uh, and the cyclic proofs can be interpreted that GL is a system maybe of self-fulfilling or self-justified beliefs. And along this uh, line of interpretation, maybe it's interesting to consider the weak geographic logic, since it uh, contains K4 and is included in GL and also with geographic logic enjoys cyclic proofs. So the question, my question is what uh, natural interpretation, maybe the exhaustive epistemic interpretation of cyclic derivations in the with geographic logic? Uh, mm. just, just, can I put in a fast comment here before we run out of time? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, this, it's been a long time since I've thought about this at all. So uh, 
what I'm saying, I think, is true with a high degree of probability. A uh, long time ago, uh, when propositional dynamic logic was relatively new, uh, Vaughan Pratt uh, had a, a, like a tableau system for it, which uh, involved circular, uh, what today we would call circular proofs. That's the first occurrence of this kind of thing that I can recall. Yeah, and this is clearly a more, much, much more general phenomenon than just about epistemic logics and model logics in general. And we have plenty of examples from Sam, from Matthias, from Mel. Uh, so, Daniel, don't worry, you'll go to much more expensive fur. I'm yes, yes, but to... all these examples uh, are long uh, uh, inductive reasoning. They are just uh, put there are, there are, uh, ambiguous. They're everywhere. So, it's not only model logic, not only the epistemic or dexastic logic. Okay. No, no, I mean that uh, maybe we can. Uh, achieve more yes. philosophical interpretation, not only technical induction interpretation of such things. Uh, I, we probably need to stop at this point and uh, let's uh, thank the speaker. Thank and, you all. Uh, thank you all. And take a short break and reconvene.